So here we are dealing with a uh, population of car owners and we know that 60% of these actually own cars. And the question is now, if we take a random sample of 100 adults, what's the probability that in that sample at least 70% of them will be car owners? So the true proportion or the true probability of a random owner being a car owner is 0.6 but what you want is that the probability of p that is here the sample proportion and therefore i'll use pr for probability that that is larger than 0.7 what we need to know is how the random variable p because that's based on on the random sample how that is distributed only once we know that do we have any chance of actually calculating that probability and we'll use two different approximations. First, let us state what we are after. We need the mu p and sigma square p. That's the expected value of the proportion and the variance of the proportion. Now, given the setup, we know they are related to the success probability of 0.6 in this way. The expected value is just 0.6. The variance is pi times 1 minus pi divided by n and that's 0.0024. So with that information we can actually now calculate the probability that p is larger than 0.7. We need to translate it into a standard normal problem, so that's the same as the probability that z is larger than 0.7 minus the mean 0.6 divided by the square root of the variance which is 0.0024. That is the probability that z is larger than, and you just need to do calculations, 2.04. That's the same as 1 minus the probability that z is smaller than 2.04. That you can read off a standard normal probability table, which I assume you can do. And as a result, our probability is 0 0.0207. So, why is this an approximation? Here, the sample proportion was treated as if it was a continuous random variable. A normal distribution is a continuous distribution. But of course, the proportion of a sample of 100 isn't continuous. It's discrete. It can be naught, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, but it cannot be 0 0.001467, for instance. So therefore, the way how we calculated the probability here is really an, an approximation and there will be an approximation error and we'll see the exact result later. It's close to the 2% which we calculated. The second way to approximate, and that is a somewhat better approximation, is the following. Rather than using the proportion, we use the number of car owners. So we define that as t, that is the sample size times the proportion. So it's the number of successes if you think of a car owner being a success in a binomial experiment. So we are after t which equals n times p and again to calculate any probabilities we need to know the distribution of this. So that is going to be normally distributed with n times pi and that is just the probability of success and the variance n squared times the variance of p and so that is just the variance of p which we had before and the n squared comes because t is n times p and in the variance we need to square the factor we can uh, simplify that somewhat so we get that t is approximately normally distributed with n times pi mean and n times pi times 1 minus pi variance. Once we plug in our values, n is 100, pi is 0 0.6 and the variance is 24. So expected value of 60, variance of 24. Now we can calculate probabilities. So we are interested in whether our sample will produce a proportion of at least 70%. Now 70% of 100 implies 70, right? Okay, so we had a sample size of 100. So we're looking for the probability that t is at least 70. Now 
now you need to recognize that we are still committing the same mistake. We're having a discrete random variable number of successes, but we are approximating it with a, with a continuous random variable, the number of successes. But now in this form, it's going to be just slightly easier to understand how we can improve the approximation, although you could do it on the proportion as well. So here's our distribution for t, here's the 70, we know the expected value is 60, and here let me also draw in 69, that will be relevant soon. So what we are after is really the probability that we get outcomes at least as large as 70. So that's the, the yellow bit's the probability we are after. Now of course you could calculate the probability up to 69, that would be the area to the left of 69, and then you realize this little red area is really unattainable. We need to split it up between 69 and 70, and we add half of this area, or approximately half of the area, to our outcome of 70. So really the probability we want to calculate here to minimize the approximation error is that t is larger than 69.5. And we again use our standardization formula to calculate it because we know t is normally distributed so we subtract the expected value of t and we divide by the square root of the variance so we get the probability that z is larger than again a little bit of calculations 1.94 and that's 1 minus the probability that z is smaller than 1.94 and again I assume you can read off probabilities of the standard normal probability table and if you do that you get as a result that um, we have 1 minus 0 0.9738 and that is 0 0.0262 okay so it's a little bit different it's a little bit larger than what we calculated beforehand and it's really larger by the, di the difference between these two, or point oh two oh seven we had previously, is that little red area which we added. This is why our probability is larger now. Now, if you do exact binomial probability calculations, and you can do that in Excel, uh, you use the function binome.dist to do that, it, uh, if you try it in Excel, it needs inputs, it needs 69, so we will calculate probability that we get up to 69 successes, sample size 100, successes 0.6 and 1, this is for the cumulative uh, distribution, and then we need to calculate 1 minus that probability, which is the probability that t is going to be at most 69, and the result then is 0 0.024783. That's the exact result. We can see that our second result was closer to that exact result than the first.